Welcome. Today you're watching Eye on Business and I am Kevin McDonald. I will be interviewing Roy Paulson, the president of Paulson Manufacturing in Temecula, California. Roy is the third generation in a family that has done manufacturing here at this facility in Temecula. And today we're going to talk about not only the manufacturing that Paulson Manufacturing does, but some of the issues that surround it in export and other political issues. Roy, thank you for coming today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, before we get started, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, Paulson Manufacturing. Well, Paulson Manufacturing was founded in 1947 right here in Temecula. And Temecula was a long way from Los Angeles where most of the tool and die shops were and the, the ability to market was uh, also uh, in Los Angeles. So we had to develop a vertically integrated structure here, basically having to do everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. and. As we uh, developed our abilities, we uh, increased our products over a period of time. The factory and the business grew and grew, focused and specializing on eye and face protection. So today, we're making eye and face protection for a variety of industries. For example, I could say uh, when you see the Los Angeles police, they all wear our type of face shields for uh, riot control. Mm -hmm or you could also see our products uh, on fire helmets around the country. So we have expanded and expanded our markets, but always staying in our specialty, in our niche area. About six years ago, we decided to expand further and go into exporting. So this has now become a situation where it's about 25% of our business and about 25% of our employment here. We uh, built an additional facility in Germany uh, this facility is to have warehousing and then also expertise in the European Union so that we could bring our products to bear there. So are you, are you doing all of your manufacturing within the borders of the United States or are you manufacturing components elsewhere or how does that work? You could say 99.9% .9 of our manufacturing is done right here in Temecula. And we believe in the idea of building our products in the United States and of using uh, U.S. made materials also. So what makes Paulson different from the competition? How is it you're able to compete? I mean, you're here in California, one of the most overregulated, high tax. I mean, what, what makes it possible for you to, to, to um, grow in such an environment? It's the innovation of our products that allow us to grow. Uh, we have always been an innovative company. But over the last years, we focused more and more on the innovation and uh, taken some very high-tech approaches to some products that were already existing in the market. I also uh, have been utilizing the government to help me grow. And uh, this is by taking uh, research and development contracts for the, from the military, but the ones that are related to our type of work. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, we get to work with uh, some of the smartest people in the world uh, in the government laboratories and then they help us in our development of our new products and we have an understanding right from the beginning that we will commercialize these items. In fact, they very much like seeing the products commercialized and um, I have a very good history with them in this area. So what do you think then, I'm going to uh, sidebar just a, a little bit here, um, you know, NASA is being turned down uh, report, reportedly and a lot of what NASA did was, was later commercialized and some of the products that we see today or many of the products we see today came out of that. Is that the type, I mean, is that going to be a negative or do you think that they'll turn inward towards more manufacturers like you versus NASA? I mean, what do you think they're going to do with that? That's a good question. Uh, I. I've just recently had the great experience of sitting right next to a NASA engineer on a flight across the country and um, had a long conversation with the, the NASA engineer. Uh, these, those guys are involved in so many different things, items that have to do with commercial aircraft, items that have to do with uh, aerial mapping mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of the Earth. Uh, all of those things are all integrated in that gigantic organization. Uh, I have taken some uh, I tried to take some projects from them, but I turned them down at the last minute. They were very nice to work with, and uh, I always, right from the beginning of the project, they always were looking for what were the other applications that those could go into. Right. That's bred right into that uh, into the society of right. that uh, organization. I think that NASA is going to be just fine. I'm not worried about them because they they're, they're so uh, intelligent 
and capable, and they've had to work through some very difficult problems over the years. So let's circle back to what you said in your last comment, and that was that um, you've seen growth in your exports. Um, if I may set this up quickly, as, the, as a nation, we have a significantly growing trade deficit. We've seen it again, another increase of 1.67 something odd percent in the last quarter of, of our deficit between trade and import and export. However, the president has recently announced the desire to increase or, or to quote yourself, double the exports. Yes, the president's uh, goal, it's called the National Export Initiative, and is to double the exports in five years. We do have a terrible trade imbalance, and there's a, a figure that doesn't get bantered around, and that is the accumulated trade imbalance, which over 10 years is in excess of $5 trillion. Mm -hmm. And this accumulated trade imbalance is like a runner trying to run with huge lead ankle weights on. It just can't get us going when we have all this terrible imbalance and over a long period of time. A lot of our trade imbalance is coming from oil. Uh, and there's not too much we can do about that on a quick basis. But as far as for increasing our exports, that's something that we can do relatively quickly, and that's why the president chose five years. Uh, it, it's a combination of events that we have to, uh, has to occur for that five-year uh, timetable to be met. One is the U.S. dollar really can't get dramatically out of control as far as its valuation. Uh, two, we have to give greater uh, amounts of ex uh, export credit to manufacturers when they ship their goods. Mm -hmm. So the XM Bank, Export-Import Bank of the United States government, is helping achieve these credits and uh, giving insurances and assurances for exporters so that they're able to finance this work. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a um, much greater role of uh, promotion of exports through the U.S. Commercial Service and through the district export councils, which I'm a member of. And uh, finally, we really need to have uh, a modernization of our export controls because the best-selling products that we have in this country and the, and the products that people want to buy fall in those areas of what they call dual use, which are high technology items. Yeah. And Covered ITAR, by ITAR, yeah. And then ITAR products, right. yep. which are, on the, are uh, controlled by the State Department. And they, these rules and regulations are very old. They're from back in the Cold War days, and yet they never changed. They only added more rules, and it became more and more and more onerous and difficult for manufacturers and distributors to be able to ship out of the country. So for those who don't understand ITAR, that's international trafficking in arms, and, and something as simple as an encrypted computer uh, can get you a very long stint in jail. And I've, I've read some stories about people selling dental equipment into Iran, for example, um, that got jail terms. And uh, well, Yeah, well, that, the, the dental equipment into Iran would have been uh, under the OFAC rules, mm -hmm. which is from the Treasury, mm -hmm. where, because that's a country you can't ship to. Right. But, the, but as far as for uh, in ITAR, just a screw that is used on, uh, on a jet plane Mm -hmm. would require an export license to ship that screw. Yeah, and you have to track it to its weight to its last endpoint too, from what I understand. Correct. You you can sell it to one, but you can't just say, oh, I sold it to a legal person. It has to be tracked to its endpoint to make sure it's not ending up in the wrong person's hands. That's correct. You're responsible forever for the product. Right. And that actually applies to our products also. I brought along 